Mark Cubbon Early Life Cubbon was born at the vicarage of Mould, Isle of Man, on 23 August 1775. His father was Vicar Thomas Cubbon, and his mother, Margaret Wilkes, was the sister of Colonel Mark Wilkes. The seventh of ten children, he grew up enjoying scrambling up the local hills and studied at the local parish school before studying under the tutorship of Madrill of Ramsey. His uncle Mark Wilkes arranged for Cubbon to enroll as a cadet in India in the spring of 1802. Early career in India, in India. Cubbon arrived in India earlier than required in the summer of 1801 at Calcutta. He gained an appointment to the 2nd Madras Battalion in 1802 and moved to the 2nd Battalion 5th Native Infantry in July 1804. Cubbon had great admiration for the Sepoys and respected their religious views. In 1809, he received a civil appointment, but the new governor of Madras, George Barlow, had passed a pledge that was unpopular among the Europeans in the Madras army. Coven refused to sign the declaration, and he lost his appointment during this so-called white mutiny in Madras. In Madras. He was reappointed in 1810 in the commissariat department initially under Colonel Close in Central India during the Pindari War, and then under Colonel Philip Meadows Taylor in Colonel. A year later, he was then made an assistant commissary general, a position well above the ranks within the army. He became a major on 23 November 1823 and was a lieutenant colonel on 22 April 1826. In 1827, he moved south to serve under the Travancore resident as commissary general, succeeding William Morrison. Mysore After the death of Tipu Sultan in 1799, the British had restored the former Hindu royal family of Mysore under a child prince with Purnia, the minister during Tipu's rule, to effectively administer until the prince grew up. The revenue collection under this system was however considered unfair and corruption was widespread. This led to an uprising the Nagar revolt in 1831, and the Raja was unable to control it. This uprising was suppressed, with the aid of the British and a commission was instituted to examine the causes. The commission, which included Major General Hawker, W. Morrison, John McLeod, and Cubbon made a report which showed extreme misgovernance. A decision was taken by the Governor General of India, William Bentinck, for direct administration of the kingdom with two commissioners. The two, however, quarreled, and this led to the appointment of a sole commissioner, William Morrison, in May 1834, but on his transfer, Cubbon was then made commissioner in June 1834. Administration and Reforms At the close of the 1831 uprising in Mysore and the British takeover on 19 October 1831, the first priority for Cubbon was law and order. Prior to his actions, murders to settle disputes were extremely common in the towns and villages, and Cubbon was disturbed by its apparent acceptance in society. Cubbon improved the system of saladders or native horsemen who would provide services to the government for a fixed monthly charge. He raised their pay to ensure that they could not be corrupted and created a force of about 4,000 horses with seven regiments, with a detachment for every taluk. There was no police force until July 1834, when a code or police hukumnama was formulated. This separated the local police from the military force. There was an armed and unarmed section, with the armed part having the duty of dealing with prisoners any field service needing them. They would also prevent thefts, watch key positions and towns, and prevent sandal trees from being cut. The unarmed peons, or kalahats, literally empty hands, were to help in the repair of roads, irrigation tanks, and follow other orders. He set up a reporting structure, which was almost entirely made up of Indians. There was no code of law in 1834, and Cubbon drew upon and expanded a system described by his uncle Wilkes in 1804. Cubbon created a judicial system that became quite popular, but it was causing considerable demands on the system, and in 1841 they made vexatious suitors liable to fines. Cubbon made himself the superior authority for handling serious crimes. 
in some cases he intervened and there were some cases where he conflicted with the decisions taken by the courts the use of a uniform code of law across all classes was novel in the kingdom of mysore cubbon also reduced the powers of the polygers or local chieftains they were paid a pension that was calculated on the basis of what it would take to maintain them in prison there was considerable friction between communities belonging to different religions and castes coven resorted to the use of a majority vote to resolve several disputes relating to religious gurus coven also made administration very strict and based on codes revenue officers taking bribes and a court officer holding extreme wahhabi tenets were dismissed he set up nine departments or casheries revenue doing post sanch police kandachar public works merimat military soar and bar medical public cattle amrit mahal judiciary judiciary public instruction prior to coven government documents were written in urdu hindi persian kannada or marathi and this led to difficulties in corruption coven restricted the languages to be used to kannada and marathi as part of financial reforms record keeping of all revenues collected was made stringent and all spending was controlled coven maintained public accounts using the cantaray pagoda equals cantarava fanum as the currency this system was followed until 1854 and replaced by the east india company currency in 1855 coven supported educational institutions run mainly by missionaries and also worked on health care establishing hospitals and homes for lepers he also issued rules against various forms of slavery that were traditionally followed in parts of mysore all forms of punishment forced labor and torture in civil life were made illegal the prison system was improved and convict labor was utilized in public works during the 1857 rebellion mysore was relatively peaceful owing to governance of coven a small band of Mohammedans in Srirangapatna were, however, planning rebellion, and Coven had the uprising quashed secretly with the help of a small band of court warriors. In reward for their actions, an exception in the Disarmament Act was made for Korg. Agriculture had been particularly hit by anarchy, with money lenders and revenue officials causing great trouble to farmers. Coven worked on the improvement of irrigation. These included the Marikan Ive project in Hiriyar, work on the Nugu, Shimsha Madhur, Hemavathi near Saklishpur, Tunga and Badra near Shimoga, and Kaveri River project near Siddhapur. He founded the Agri Horticultural Society in 1839 and had the Lalbog Gardens transferred to it. In 1836, he wrote that great public benefit may be expected to arise from this institution not only in regard to objects merely horticultural and the extension of botanical knowledge but in the promotion of the agricultural interest of the country by introductions suited to the climate amongst which may be enumerated varieties of sugar cane cotton coven introduced new crops varieties of crops new breeds of livestock apart from maintaining traditional breeds like the amrit mahal that had helped hyder ali and to Pusultan sultan in battles and also took an interest in forestry in eighteen forty six sisu plantations were tried and in eighteen fifty five minus fifty six teak was planted in lakwali on the banks of the tunga and badra he issued an order to ensure that valuable woods could not be cut without government permission he also issued orders against cumry or slash and burn agriculture he also worked towards improving the road system with four classes of roads and oversaw the building of bridges at key points such as at Frazapert, Madur, Hoscote, Shimoga, and Hirier. The road system also required key passes through the western ghats and for this he opened up passes at Agum, Boond, Sampage, and Piriambadi. Coven maintained traditional religious institutions and granted concessions to maths, temples, old age homes and other institutions that were supported by the maharaja coven made full use of natives in administration and reduced the need for european appointments from eighteen thirty four there was a single commissioner for mysore in eighteen thirty six he was given charge of korg and from eighteen forty three was also to act as resident for mysore without any increase in his own salary
Cubbon's administration is estimated to have costed only about £13,000 a year and required only four Europeans. Edward Washburn Hopkins wrote in 1901 that one of the solutions to India's famines was to Cubbonize its administration, i.e. to use native government. He was knighted KCB in 1856. In 1859, when orders were issued to transfer the superintendence of Mysore affairs from the Governor-General to the Government of Madras, Cubbon submitted his resignation, as he held it to be impolitic and contrary to the declaration made by the Honorable Court of Directors in 1838. The order was withdrawn by the Viceroy, Lord Canning. At the beginning of the next year, however, Cubbon felt compelled to resign owing to ill health. Contribution to Canada Mark Cubbon took special interest and financially supported the publication of the first Canners Canada translation of the Bhagavad Gita, the Bhagavad Gita, or Dialogues of Krishna and Arjun in 18 lectures with Sanskrit, Canners, and English in parallel columns, edited by Rev. John Garrett, published by the Wellian Mission Press, Bangalore. Mark Cubbon also financially supported the printing and publication of the first Canners English Dictionary, which was compiled by William Reeve, edited by Daniel Sanderson and published in 1858 by the Wesleyan Mission Press. Personality, personality. Cubbon grew up in India with a deep understanding for native sentiment and empathy for the people and their traditions. He was considered very fair and was tactful, making use of a native style of argumentation when required. In his dealings with the Mysore king, he outright avoided the use of espionage to obtain information, a method used by many others in the past. He was required in his work to host public dinners but did not relish parties and especially disliked dance balls. Fond of horses, he maintained as many as sixty in his stables. He did not visit church and made jokes on the inconsistencies of religious professors but he enforced the closure of all offices on Sundays. Cubbon was unmarried. Cubbon built a summer home on the summit of Nanda Drug in 1834. Lady Canning left a memoir of a visit. I am visiting a charming old general, Sir Mark Cubbon, 1,500 feet above the table land of Bangalore, and with a view over about 150 miles of country on all sides. It is cool, fresh air and a very pleasant spot, and the old gentleman is very delightful. He has been all this century in India, but seems to know all that has gone on all over the world, and is the most grand senior old man I almost ever saw. The Story of Two Noble Lives by A. J. C. Hare J. C. Hare J. C. Hare C. Hare C. Hare C. Hare C. A. C. Hare C. C. Hare J. C. Hare J. C. Hare C. Hare C. Hare C. Hare C. Death and Legacy Cubbon died at Suez on 23 April 1861 while returning to England in the company of his physician, Dr. Campbell. He died of liver ailment, or possibly an abscess in the lungs, his last words being recorded as and through no merit of my own. From Southampton, Campbell was joined by Haynes and Colonel McQueen, who took the body to Liverpool and then to Douglas. All flags were flown at half-mast, and on 17 May his body was interred in the Mall churchyard amid a large gathering. The archdeacon announced, In that vault lies the greatest man this island has produced for centuries back. When news of his death reached Mysore, all public offices were closed for three days. An equestrian statue by Baron Marichetti was unveiled on 16 March 1866 in a large gathering and addressed by Lewin Bentham Boring Cubbins, successor as Commissioner of Mysore. The statue was initially placed in the parade ground at Bangalore but moved later in front of the main government buildings, the Atara Kashari now housing the Karnataka High Court. When the statue was unveiled, the forehead was marked with the three lines of ash, symbols of Brahmanism, a prank by some young soldiers that was referred to in the painting of the statue. Coven Road, Kabampit, and Coven Park in Bangalore are named after him. A medallion portrait of Coven is found on the ceiling at the west end of the central hall 
in the Karnataka High Court building, largely ignored since Indian independence in 1947, a statue of Mark Cubbon was garlanded for the first time at a celebration of Cubbon's 238th birth anniversary on 23 August 2013. The function required special permission from the Karnataka High Court, and police protection was provided. This celebration was however opposed by Vatal Nagaraj, who considered it a shame that British statues were still standing in public spaces suggesting that they be moved into museums. On 28 June 2020, the statue was moved from the High Court premises to Coven Park.